Hello, I'm sharing a tamis excision of a mid-rectal polyp. It's up around 11 centimeters. You'll see it right up here. There it is. Um, MRI uh, showed it was a mucosal lesion. Biopsies was adenoma without dysplasia, and I selected this patient for a tamis excision of the polyp. Um, I usually start just by marking out the lesion. Um, with cautery, I am actually using a hook ligature combo device. It's bariatric length, it's 45 centimeters, and this helps to offset it from the length of the um, camera and the left hand. Um, I like that because it gives you a little bit more degrees of freedom when doing tamis as well as single port. Sometimes I'll actually use a bariatric length camera. So after I kind of mark out the distal margins, I'll get into the submucosal plane. Um, I'm just using monopolar cautery for this. I am using air seal with the um, uh, device, uh, the access device. I think that it helps to eliminate uh, smoke and prevent the bellowing of the rectum. Um, it does not prevent that t uh, temporary blurring of the screen when the condensation gets on the screen, though. So now I'm just trying to get into the mesorectal fat by going full thickness through the rectal wall. You'll see I'm kind of sword fighting with myself. I'm having my cameraman change their angles of the 30 degree scope to get out of my way. And the frustrating thing about this lesion is that it was on a fold um, and it actually wraps um, around 270 degrees around the lumen. So already I'm noticing as I'm excising this that by going more than 180 degrees around the wall um, that the defect closure is going to be slightly challenging. Keep trying to change angles to move the camera away from the working instrument. That's what you saw me do right there. And here I'm going full thickness through the rectal wall, and that's mesorectal fat there. So I'll do this on the distal extent of the tumors, particularly the ones where I can't see the cephalad extent of things. Um, and you'll see how this actually helps you to work your way uh, more proximally. Keep trying to change that angle to move the camera out of the way from banging into the working arms. So here that hook instrument is actually a double instrument. It has a ligature too. I'm in the mesorectum, so for hemostasis purposes I'll use the uh, ligature portion of this. And I'm going to come within the confines of what I've excised of the mucosa through all of the mesorectum beneath the lesion. This is just to ensure you have done a full, full thickness through the rectal wall into the mesorectal fat. And as you see, by doing this, it allows you to pull the tumor further distal, and you can start to see those lateral margins that go up and around the tumor. Here I'm taking a bite through the mucosa coming up laterally around the tumor. Now I'm pulling down on it. It allows me to see a little bit better of that mucosal margin going up over the um, cephalad extent of the tumor. I'm walking hand over hand to try to pull this into my field of view. Not my most uh, visibly skilled resection, but you know, as I always say, slow and steady gets it done. And we did get it done because this tumor came out with no dysplasia, clearly uh, negative margins circumferentially around the tumor. 
Um, this was an outpatient surgical procedure. The patient went home uh, within an hour of the procedure. Um, very little discomfort other than gas cramping on uh, postoperative day zero and into the morning of postoperative day one. So here I can see a little bit more of the cephalate extent of the tumor by pushing it up along the wall of the rectum, and I'm able to take some bites getting further cephalate. Often is the case that you don't realize it, but you are actually going too far cephalad into the rectum. And so what I'll do at a certain point is I'll pull down on the tumor and look over the top and you'll actually see normal rectal wall, which you're gonna see in a second. So I can see that's the end of the tumor right there. And now I know that I just need to amputate and this prevents me from going too far posteriorly um, and basically dissecting in the wall of the rectum for another several centimeters above the tumor, which isn't necessary. Going up and all the way around the lesion here. Just really want to make sure I don't by accident bite through the tumor, so I'm really getting that view. There it is. Now I know I can come straight across this. And that's the last of it right here. So out comes the tumor. Here is our defect. You can see it spiraled almost 270 degrees around the rectal wall. And I'm gonna to try to close this um, uh, basically far to near transversely as best as I can. You'll notice as this comes closed, it kind of looks like it's um, significantly narrowed the lumen. And although I don't disagree that it's narrowed the lumen a bit, What's really happened is, is that you're looking around the corner of this fold that gets reconstructed with the luminal closure or the defect closure, which you'll see as I pass the camera uh, through that angle, it goes up uh, rather normally and this patient had zero issues with defecation um, after the procedure. Seen back in the office around six weeks post-op to do a um, in-office proctoscopy and you see a completely healed scar with a little bit of floating residual um, VLOC suture um, still embedded in the wall but clearly has already come through and is floating free uh, through the scar into the rectal lumen but completely wide open uh, rectal lumen. So I'm suturing, again, trying to do this transversely. It gets a little confusing as you get up higher because if I close that defect that I'm looking at right there, I'm gonna completely shut the rectal lumen. I'm trying to show the rectal lumen here. That's the lumen there, there it is, you can see, so don't get fooled. And so what I end up doing is I actually started a suture up above and I suture it down from the top to prevent the inadvertent completely closing of the lumen.